Hey everyone, I'm John, a guy in his mid-50s who's seen the best and worst of times. Before I dive into my story, please hit that like and subscribe button for more tales of life, loss, and the strength to keep going. Back in the day, I was at the top of my game in Atlanta, running a thriving business that seemed unstoppable. Life was sweet, especially after marrying Laura, who I met at the hospital where she worked as a nurse. We were quick to fall in love, and it wasn't long before our little family started to grow with the birth of our daughter, Lily. Laura, we've got everything we've ever wanted, I remember telling her one evening as we watched Lily play in the living room. Laura smiled, but her eyes were always wanting more. Yes, but there's always room for more, isn't there, John? That more soon turned into a monthly allowance of $30,000 after she decided to quit her job. I didn't mind at the time. I was making good money, and I wanted her to be happy. But as our bank accounts grew, so did Laura's taste for luxury. Meanwhile, Lily was growing up with everything she could ever ask for, but none of the discipline. Things took a turn when I was diagnosed with cancer. It hit me like a ton of bricks, not just physically, but financially, too. The treatments were expensive, and I had to sell our second house to cover the costs. John, how could this happen to us? What about the money? What about Lily's school and our vacations? Laura's words stung more than the illness itself. I was struggling to stay afloat, both in my health and our finances, and the visits from Laura and Lily started to dwindle. One day, Laura came alone, her face cold and distant. I need a new house, John, one that suits my needs, she demanded. I was aghast. A new house? Laura, I'm fighting for my life here, and all you care about is a house? She didn't even flinch. Weeks later, she returned, not to check on me, but to drop a bombshell. John, Lily and I are leaving. We're moving in with someone who can provide for us now that you can't. Just like that, they were gone. My heart broke not just from my failing health, but from the betrayal of the woman I loved and the daughter I adored. Left alone, I faced my darkest days, struggling through treatment with the support of a kind-hearted nurse named Emily. John, you're not alone, Emily would say as she managed my medications and helped keep my spirits up. You can get through this, and you'll be stronger for it. Thanks to Emily and her son James, who started helping out at my company, we began to turn things around. Slowly but surely, my health improved, and so did my business. Emily wasn't just my nurse. She became my partner in life. We found a new beginning together, far from the shadows that Laura and Lily left behind. As I grappled with cancer, my business began to suffer. Bills piled up, and with Laura and Lily's visits becoming less frequent, I started digging into our finances to understand where all the money was going. John, you need to see this. There's a lot of unaccounted withdrawals and transfers, my accountant showed me one afternoon, papers strewn across his desk. What? Let me see. I poured over the documents, my eyes widening as I traced the trail of money leading to a secret account set up by Laura. She's been siphoning company funds for years. The room spun as the reality of Laura's deceit sank in. Not just leaving me for another man, but risking our company, our employees' livelihoods for her greed. That's not all, John. There are also these luxury purchases, and look, payments for a condo downtown. He pointed at the list of transactions that detailed a lifestyle hidden from me. How could she do this to me, to us? I slumped back, feeling the weight of betrayal heavier than my illness. Days turned into weeks, and as I slowly regained my strength, my resolve hardened. I needed to confront Laura to hear her admit it. I called her, my hands shaking as I dialed. Laura, we need to talk. It's important. Meet me at the old cafe where we first met. When she walked into the cafe, she looked different, colder, more calculating. You wanted to talk, John. Make it quick. I have things to do. Laura, why did you do it? The money, the lies, uh... How could you just drain everything we built together? Her lips curled into a sneer. I did what I had to do to survive. You were sinking, John, and I wasn't about to drown with you. So you leave? With our daughter? You steal from me when I needed support the most? Survival, John. You taught me that. Business is about survival. I taught you to be ethical, Laura. Not a thief. 
She laughed, a harsh sound that echoed in the empty cafe. Ethical? Look where that got you, John. I'm doing just fine without your ethics. I watched her walk away, her words cutting deeper than any physical pain I'd felt. But this was my turning point. I wasn't going to be a victim any longer. Laura's actions won't define me, I told myself as I left the cafe. I was down, but not out. My fight wasn't just against cancer now, it was for justice, for my company, for my dignity. As I rebuilt my life with Emily and James by my side, I knew the path ahead wouldn't be easy. But I was ready to fight, to ensure Laura faced the consequences of her actions, and to take back what was rightfully mine. Stick around for the next chapter, where I take you through the rebirth of my life and business. Thanks for listening. And remember, hit that subscribe button for more updates. See you next time. Hey everyone, John here. Thanks for tuning back in. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe for more of my story. Now let's get into a new beginning that changed everything. As I was trying to pick up the pieces of my life, Emily, the nurse who had been by my side through the worst of my cancer treatment, became more than just a caregiver. Her kindness was a beacon during my darkest days. We need to get your strength back up, John. How about a short walk today? Emily would suggest, her voice always encouraging. Thanks, Emily. I don't think I could have made it this far without you, I replied one day, realizing just how much she had come to mean to me. It's not just me, John. You're fighting hard, too. We're in this together, she'd smile, and it was in those simple moments I found hope. As my health improved, so did my desire to rebuild what Laura had tried to destroy. Emily's son, James, had a knack for business and offered to help. Let's look over the business plan again, John. I think we can increase efficiency with a few changes, James would point out, going over documents with a sharp eye. You've got a real head for this, James. Thank you for stepping in. I acknowledged his efforts, grateful for his support. With Emily and James, we not only stabilized the company, but even started expanding. Inspired by Emily's flair for design, we ventured into a new business together, a fashion house. Emily, your designs deserve to be seen. What do you think about starting our own line? I proposed one evening, excitement building at the new opportunity. Her eyes lit up. Really, John? You think we could do it? I know we can. Let's make it happen. Our relationship grew alongside our business. Love had found me again, in the most unexpected way. Emily, I don't know what the future holds, but I'd like you to be a part of mine. Will you marry me? I asked one night, heart pounding. Yes, John. Yes, a thousand times, she said, tears of joy in her eyes. Life seemed perfect again, until one day, Laura showed up out of the blue. She looked worn and desperate, a shadow of the woman she once was. John, I need help. I've got nowhere else to go, Laura pleaded, her voice trembling. Laura, after everything, why should I help you now? I asked, the bitterness hard to hide. Please, John, I made a mistake. I'm sorry for everything. Her eyes searched mine for any sign of softness. Sorry doesn't change what you did, Laura. You left when I needed you the most. I know, I know I was wrong. But isn't there a place for forgiveness? I forgave you long enough to let go of the pain, Laura, but that doesn't mean you can walk back into my life. She faltered, perhaps expecting a different response. John, I have nothing left. You made your choices, Laura. Now I've made mine. I wish you well, but this is where your part in my story ends. As she walked away, I felt a weight lift. It was finally over. I had stood up for myself, not out of spite, but for closure. In the bustling heart of our new fashion house, the air buzzes with the sound of success. Emily and James by my side. Each day is a reminder of how far we've come. Look at all this, John. Can you believe we did it? Emily says, her eyes sparkling as she looks around our showroom filled with the latest designs. I knew you had it in you, Emily. I'm just glad I got to be part of this, I respond, unable to keep the pride from my voice as we prepare for another busy day. As we oversee the final touches for our upcoming fashion show, James comes in with the latest sales reports. We're set to break last year's record by 20%. That's fantastic, James. Your strategies are really paying off, I compliment him, thrilled to see him thriving in a role he's grown so passionate about. In the midst of our success, I get a call that stops me in my tracks. It's from an old contact, 
someone who stayed in touch with Laura's side of things. Just thought you should know, John. Laura's hit rock bottom, lost her home, her latest relationship didn't last. She's been asking around for help. The news stirs a complex mix of emotions within me. There's a part of me that feels vindicated, knowing that Laura's choices led her here. But there's also a pang of sadness for the life we once shared and for the person I once believed she was. I appreciate the update, I tell the caller, my voice steady, but I'm focusing on the future now. Hanging up, I turn back to the vibrant scene before me. Emily adjusting a mannequin's dress, James discussing logistics on his phone. This is my world now. This is where my heart lies. Everything okay, John? Emily asks, noticing the momentary shift in my mood. Yeah, everything's perfect, I assure her, taking her hand. Let's get back to work. We've got a show to run. As we walk back to the flurry of activity, I reflect on my journey, the pain, the betrayal, and the healing. Fate dealt its hand, not just to me, but to Laura as well. In the end, we each face the consequences of our choices. And as I look ahead, surrounded by love and success, I know that focusing on what truly matters, Emily, James, and the life we've built together, is the only way forward. About my daughter, she avoided me because her mother behavior, but I always asked about her from distance and send her money. In the heart of our thriving fashion house, the buzz of activity never ceases. Today, as I walk through the bustling workspace with Emily by my side, we're surrounded by the vibrant energy of creativity and hard work, our dreams manifesting into reality. Can you believe how far we've come, Emily? I ask, my voice filled with wonder as we stop to admire a particularly stunning dress design. It's more than I ever imagined, John, Emily replies, her eyes reflecting the fabric's colors. And to think, there's so much more ahead of us. As we discuss plans for expanding our line into international markets, James joins us, his face alight with the excitement of new opportunities. We just got off a call with distributors in Europe. They love the new designs and want to double their orders. That's incredible, James. Your hard work is really taking us places. Just then, my phone rings. It's a call that brings news from a past life. Laura's further descent into hardship. Despite the success surrounding me, a part of my past still echoes through my present. After hanging up, I take a moment to gather myself before turning back to Emily and James. Well, let's not let anything dim this amazing day. We have a lot to prepare for, and I couldn't be prouder of what we're achieving together. As we dive back into the preparations, I'm struck by the stark contrast between my past and present. The decisions I've made, the paths I've chosen, and the people I've surrounded myself with have all led me here, to a place of fulfillment and hope. John, every end of the season we should celebrate our success. What do you think? Emily suggests with a playful grin. I think that's a brilliant idea. Let's plan something special for the team. I agree, already imagining the celebration. Life, as I've learned, isn't just about the challenges we face, but how we rise above them. And as I look around at my new family and the success we've built together, I know I've found my place. I've turned a page, and this chapter is filled with nothing but gratitude and forward momentum. Thanks for sticking with me through this journey. Remember, no matter where you are, there's always a path to a better tomorrow. Don't forget to subscribe for more insights and stories. Take care, and let's all keep moving forward together. That's a wrap on John's story, folks. Before you go, I have a question. Do you believe Laura deserved her fate? Or do you think John should have offered her help despite their past? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. Let's get a conversation going. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed the story and hit that subscribe button for more. Your support means a lot.